Hello. Welcome to Faith Matters. I'm joined by my very good friend, Dr. Steve Land, Pentecostal Theological Seminary. We've been talking about ministry and burnout. And you know, I guess the real question is, how can you be on fire for God and yet not burn out? I've heard these people say, what do you mean burn out? That guy couldn't burn out. He's never even been on fire. But the truth is, you can be on fire and you can burn out. So how do you stay on fire and not burn out? You know, part of that is just a really faulty understanding of our spirituality, isn't it? That we're always at a certain level and pitch constantly and maintain that level constantly. If a soldier does that, they experience battle fatigue. They just can't maintain that high level pitch frontline combat all the time. Same way with us. In fact, I, I used to tell a joke about a pastor who saw himself in a certain stereotypical way. And he'd come in and greet his wife and children every morning at breakfast with his tie on, his coat. He'd have a little lectern at the head of the kitchen table. Good morning, wife. Good morning, children. We've got eggs. We've got bacon. We've got toast. We've got something. Everybody, yes, I see that hand. Let us pray. <laughs> Dad, could you, we got something coming up today. I've already finished the course now. You go ahead and go out. Service is over. Goodbye. And, you know, it's a, it's a phony view of spirituality uh, that we have. I think we think Jesus was always at this high pitch. He never walked with his disciples, never just had a meal, never just sat with children. You know, we see all that in the New Testament. We tend to miss it. We only see like the feeding of the 5,000 or, you know, walking on the water. Well, every day wasn't that. You know, there were many things he did, but there are also things he did to walk along with them and be with them and to touch them and to let them know he cared and to listen and to pray with them. Very important. You know, I did come across some of these preventions, and I think they're excellent. First of all, the obvious of spend more time in prayer and study of the Word. Now, you can still be spending lots of time in prayer and study of the Word and go through times of burnout. But and not just for a sermon. But oh, to, to man. Eat the word yourself. You know, this is for me. Yeah. Pray the scripture. So that you're not just sermon hunting, but you're truly finding manna for your daily bread. Oh, and I've been depressed to, to pray, Lord, my tears have fed me all night long. How long? Mm. How People long, oh, me, Lord? How long? Your God? Yeah. You know, and, and you pray those Psalms. Another good suggestion here that I found uh, Tom Rayner suggested, stop comparing yourself to others. Oh, Don't you think that is really a big deal when it comes to l thoughts that, you know, you're not crazy, but it becomes, it becomes distorted thinking. And you start comparing yourself with someone else and thinking, you know, I'm not where I should be in ministry. I'm not as prominent as I should be. I'm not doing what I should be doing. Well, the inferiority that we lay on pastors of churches under 100. You know, you've been so involved in bringing about this vital church renewal. And I love the illustration I heard recently from a leader in that movement. He said, you've got a, a, a plum here and you've got a large watermelon, a pumpkin, he said. He said, do you condemn the plum for not being as big as the pumpkin? No, it's not supposed to be. It's fully what it should be. Wow. So sometimes in our talk about that and comparing ourselves to others, it's big and little. You know, we've, we've had, we used to have a, a thing years ago, giants in the making, churches giants in the making. I came to the meeting, I said, all the midgets on the move meet over here with me. <laughs> I'll get in trouble for saying that using midgets, but I said, that's how we feel sometimes. It's big you and little me. And isn't that the truth? And that leads to the kind of feelings oh, that terrible. we have. Another thing he suggests is to cut off draining relationships. Oh. Now, let's just face it. There are people <laughs> that build you up. There are people that you just walk away from and feel like you need to sing a funeral dirge. That's exactly right. I've had family members like that, my extended family on my mother's side. Boy, they, they saw the cloud in every silver lining. If you got a blessing well enjoyed, it won't last long. It was, I mean, but there are people that are draining and they're always in conflict. They know every negative thing that's taking place in the church and the world every day. And it just drags you down. I think there's a great art to a gift in finding ways to encourage and not just flatter people, but really encourage them. You know, get, have a close relationship where people know you well enough to just affirm what is really there and, and praise God and affirm you in the process. You know, what we're really talking about is finding balance yeah. in ministry. Yeah. Tell me, how do, you, how do you find balance? I think the, the key to balance is integrity, in, integration. If you've got a guy who's a, walking on a, a tightrope up over a gorge or somewhere, he's got that pole, but he's got to have that center. He can't pay attention to the side. Over here, he's got to pay attention to the center. Is, is this person staying centered? Of course, that's one of the key definitions we've said earlier in our discussion about, about uh, sanctification. Integration of your, your thinking, your desires, your willing, your behavior. Integration, it's a whole. You're integrated. That center is there with God. 
and you, and you, and you stay centered in the Lord right there. So that, so that you don't go too far this way, too far that way. But whatever builds up that relationship, it keeps you centered and on focus to what you're doing, walking in the narrow way, following after the Lord. One thing that I guess I've learned, too, is that life does move in cycles. You know, to everything there is a season, there is a time to every purpose under heaven, that it is not abnormal to go through seasons when you feel like you're on the mountain. And it's not abnormal to feel like you're going through a season of a valley. That that is all part of life. I think that's really an important point uh, to say to people that are, that are listening today and thinking about their own life and the seasons of their life. And also, when you come out of times of intense stress, knowing that it's, 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 it's very important to come apart with the Lord. Mm. My dad used to say, we've got to come apart with the Lord or we'll just come apart at the seams. And, and the way we do that, a different kind of spirituality, retreats, spiritual retreats. They're not just filled with, you know, in the Church of God, we have a retreat. We're going to have several speakers and a lot of music. We very seldom really retreat and take time to be still and to reflect and to share the deepest things in our heart. And I think that's part of that balance that you're talking about. You know, the mountaintop is wonderful, but God's with us in the valley, too. And a lot of people are in the valley. And if we don't come through that valley, how can we be touched with the feelings of others? Christ was touched with our feelings of our infirmities. He, he underwent all that for us. And as we undergo, as we come out the other side, we become more useful instruments in the Lord's hands. You know, Dr. Crick at our school, at seminary for years, uh, some faculty would get a little upset, some students, with him talking about the clinical dimension, the human dimension. They'd get uneasy. Well, no, he won't be spiritual. He'd say, yeah, but, you, but you're a human instrument. And you have to pay attention to, you know, your, your, your relationships, your emotional life, your sexual life, your financial life, your, your, your extended family. These are all to be integrated. This is all part of you. And he'd say when you do pastoral care, remember you are the problem. <laughs> Getting you out of the way so God can help and minister to these people. And you don't use them for your own needs. It's a big deal. You know, one of the more painful experiences a minister can go through that leads to burnout is betrayal. Oh. When you have felt like you have invested your life, you have invested your teaching That's into so an individual, and they come up to you and they say, well, you know, Pastor, we love you, but God's leading us on yes. to a different place, yes. so we need to go where we can be fed. Uh, you know, everyone says, don't take that personally. <laughs> but I just got to tell you, sometimes I'm guilty right now before the Lord and all of His holy angels of taking it personal. That's exactly right. And I want to know how not to take it personal, That's you know? Right. You're the pastor. They're I, telling you. And, and, and I'm thinking, I'm the problem. What's wrong with me? Yeah, we always internalize it. I think that's exactly right. And you talk to these people, and, and many of them have moved several times. <laughs> you know, they go to the, there are people today who go to one church for music, one for preaching, one for the trips, one for the Sunday school class. They're, they're, they're members of four or five churches, you know. They're just, it's, they're just choosing for their own self-interest. But you can't pull back and stop loving and stop investing in no. people, which is the temptation. The temptation is when we get hurt that we're just not going to, ever put ourselves out there anymore to be hurt again. Uh, but you can't minister at a distance. So how can you love and how can you minister and yet guard your own heart? You know, that's such a wonderful question about guarding your own heart. If you don't do your ministry from your heart, then you're just a performer. You know, uh, one person said the greatest thing about acting is to be honest, and once you learn to do that, you can just fake it. That is, you just learn how to appear honest and, 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 and how to cry at the right moment and laugh at the right moment, and you're so skilled at it. You're just kind of going through the motions. So guarding our heart is essential to having true relationships in our family, with, and of course with God is the first issue, uh, to love the Lord with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. That has to be first at the center of everything we do. That having people that know us to hold us accountable, and, you know, family. I, I can come in the front door and my wife will be there, and she can tell by my tenor of voice what kind of day it is. Yeah. Hello, hi, you know, hi, you know, she can tell right away what's going on uh, because she knows me. So people who know us and what we said earlier about accountability groups, you know, a network of people, two or three people, whatever that you can trust and process things with, they see things we don't see. You know, one guy told me recently, a few months ago, said, you know, you're depressed, you're really down, this is really draining you. I said, you're right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to hear that and own that myself and say, okay, now I need to operate differently because I'm in a different place right now. So move slower, take more care you know, as I go along. Uh, take a physician in a hospital. 
you know, there are a lot of things happening in their personal life. There's a lot of stress, and they're working in the emergency room. They're constantly seeing people come in with just trauma, trauma, trauma all the time. But if they don't watch out, they'll burn out. And if they don't watch out, they'll be making unnecessary mistakes, perpetuating things that are not good medical treatment until a colleague comes along and says, no, you missed this. We're in too big a hurry. We've got to slow down and focus now, get centered again, or we're going to hurt patients. And that's what happens to us in ministry. Mm. So there is the need to slow down, take time. Take time and reflect with trusted friends. Reflect groups. with trusted friends. Really important. And, uh, and listen to what the Lord is saying during oh. this time. That's exactly right. That, that time to listen and to believe that God does minister and does speak to us. Our danger is we're around holy things all the time. And we talked about this before too, that we get so familiar with God. You know, we take God's name in vain. We take other people's name in vain. You know, and we end up in a situation where we, we tend towards either cynicism or despair or both. You know, well, who really cares? And is this ever going to be any different? And I just don't like this. And I don't, I don't care about this anymore. And, I, you know, I want to just give up. And then God comes back and says, well, you know, long suffering is what produces tested character. <laughs> you know what? That is so true. And I wish there was a way to experience long suffering without suffering long. <laughs> that's right. You know? That's right. But it that's what produces it. and that's what shows godly character, isn't it? If you don't care, you don't suffer. But if you suffer, it can affect your caring. Yes. So it's, it, it's caring in the Lord. You know, we have to, we have to care in, in fellowship with a good shepherd uh, and, and say to this person we meet, Lord, this is the person that you created, you've redeemed. I want to discern what you're doing with that person and try to cooperate with that. Try to, try to come where they are right now and not where I'd like for them to be or where I'd like to be, where we are right now realistically. Right now in this moment, what constitutes integrity in ministry? You know, not six months down the process, but right now, what does it, what does it look like? Exactly. Exactly. Well, I just want to give you a word of encouragement today. Uh, and that word of encouragement is God knows exactly where you are. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 that we as ministers of the new covenant, we have this treasure in jars of clay. We are made to realize more and more just how fragile those jars of clay can be. But I want to tell you, even though the, the, the outward man is experiencing these trials. It does not take away from the purity and the reality of the treasure that is in you. Don't focus so much on the container that you forget the content. You have in you the excellency of God's power and His revelation. You're not going to fail. You are not going to fall. God is with you. Thank you for watching us today on Faith Matters. We're so glad that you uh, gave us the time to Steve Land on his behalf and for me. Thank you. Uh, be sure and continue to come back and view archived programs and new programs because faith really does matter.